So is this now a full-blown trade war and where do we go from here? Well, here in London, the economist and founder of Aquant Analytics, Dr Rebecca Harding, is with me. And in Washington, I'm joined by the former Deputy Director of Policy Development at the IMF, Desmond Lockman. Well, Rebecca, let me turn to you first. What are the key products that China is hitting here? So China's hitting soybeans, which is a big issue for uh, the U.S., also aerospace, which is another very big issue for the U.S. So when the U.S. went to, when President Trump went to China a few months ago, um, he was very keen to strike deals, and a lot of those were aerospace deals. And, and that's kind of emblematic of what the U.S. economy is concerned about, doing these big aerospace deals. But the other thing is that, that, that soybeans is really big for the American agricultural market. So that's that's going to cre create problems at home for the president. We don't know when these tariffs will actually come into effect, do we? No, we don't. And I think the issue um, is a lot of this is still in the realms of rhetoric. And we have to remember that this is rhetorical to some extent. So are we in a full-blown trade war at the moment? You're seeing some diplomatic, diplomatic spats or some skirmishes on the borders, if you like. A full-blown trade war is when everybody starts getting involved. Well, Desmond Lockman, we've just heard from Rebecca Harding there. These are quite surgical attacks almost by China, products like soybeans that really strike at the heart of, of uh, the Trump voting heartland. Uh, absolutely. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to respond in a measured way. They're trying to respond in a way that'll be very harmful to Trump in a political sense. Uh, but it's not in China's interest to engage in a full-blown trade war. The thing with China is they, they have to do something from a political point of view. So what they're doing is they're responding in kind. And there is time to step back from the brink and to prevent us from just drifting into a trade war that's going to be in nobody's interest. So how do we do that? How do we step back from the brink? Well, there's a period before which the American trade restrictions become effective, that there's still a couple of weeks to go before that they're going to be in place. So one does have time uh, to try to find a way in which you can negotiate a deal that will be in the interest of both parties. Uh, I must say, though, that Trump comes out with rhetoric uh, that doesn't give an indication uh, that he's hurrying to go down th that route. In fact, he seems to be insisting that China has to get rid of its trade surplus with the United States by at least $100 billion. And that's not at all uh, something Minister, that you know is that, plausible. Uh, You're nodding and, along uh, to that, Rebecca. You uh, think that uh, Trump's using this as a tactic to get people to the negotiating together, table rather than actually uh, hitting them per se? So I think you have to look at Trump's policies generally. And when he's gone on Twitter and stated something about trade, very generally it's been um, something to bring people to the table. So he tends to take this bilateral approach to trade. I export more, you export less, I win, you lose, this kind of zero-sum mentality. It's a zero-sum game, is it? Yeah. Well, it's a zero-sum game if everybody decides to embark on a, on a trade war, then it's zero-sum, nobody wins. Um, and I think everybody realises that nobody wins if we hit that particular nuclear option. Um, but it isn't a zero-sum game because the world is interdependent. Global trade is interdependent and it's shifting seismically, so it includes things like intellectual property these days. But isn't there an issue here that China could hurt itself? I mean, it's the world's biggest consumer of soybeans. I think take takes something like 60% of all consumption and America produces 60%, where's China going to replace that lost US production from? So one of the interesting routes for China is actually Brazil. Brazil exports an awful lot of soybeans to China as well. Whether or not it can completely replace um, the American Im imports of soybeans is, is debatable. But I think, to be honest, we're going to see rhetorical escalation at this stage. There is a danger of this spilling into a trade war through political miscalculation, if I can use that. Um, but I do think that actually what we're likely to see is people coming to the table and coming to some kind of agreement because the damage on both sides is too great. I mean, Desmond Lockman, to what extent... I mean, trade wars traditionally tend to hurt countries that operate a trade surplus, like China, like Germany. Do you think that uh, Mr Trump, in a sense, is holding all the aces here? 
No, not at all. That a trade war isn't in anybody's interest. That countries that are running trade deficits lose too. We get benefits out of trading, and what we're seeing is that Trump is having to pay a very heavy price for all of this talk about a trade war. In that. The stock market is getting trashed. That stock prices in the United States are down by something like 10 percent since he started the trade war. So the United States can get really hit very hard. China will probably get hit even harder. It's not in anybody's interest. What Trump keeps saying that we can win a trade war is absolutely nonsense. It just reflects complete ignorance of what occurred in the 1930s when there were absolutely no winners from a trade war. Yes, that lost uh, value in the stock market, pretty striking now. I mean, can that ever be worth it? I mean, is, is Trump making noises about seeing that as being a price worth paying? Well, if last year when the stock market was going up, he kept trumpeting it. Now what we've seen is we've seen $3 trillion of value wiped off the stock market in the space of a couple of months. That's something like 15 percent of United States GDP and wealth. This can't possibly be worth the candle. Uh, and hopefully, what the market is telling him uh, it might influence the way in which he behaves. That's really our only hope that he really listens to the market. He sees that this is a route to which he'll really regret having gone down because it'll be so damaging to financial markets and to the U.S. economy and the global economy as well. All right, Desmond Lockman in Washington, Rebecca Harding here in London. Thanks both for joining me. Thank you.